Yeah, so we're just going to talk about content creation because it is a hustle. And um, you and I have had a couple conversations about it in the past here since we've met a few, few months ago, um, which was really cool. And I like to share the story. Uh, you know, I've got a Discord, Low Level Hell. You guys can check it out. The link should be in the uh, Twitch page there for, for everything. Um, but, uh, you know, I pay attention when people join and stuff. And, and, and if I see a name that I recognize, a content creator or something, I, you know, I reach out and say, Hey, and, uh, uh growling sidewinder joined up and I was kind of surprised by that. Honestly, I honestly, I don't know why you joined it. <laughs> anyway, I guess you were trying to learn helicopter stuff and you figured. Yeah, check it out. I, I was. And people told me if you want to learn helicopters, you got to go to Casmo's discord. So oh, they were not wrong. Um, not because of me, cause we got a lot of smart dudes in that place, uh, much smarter than me. But, um, yeah, so I reached out and said hello and, uh, yeah, it was totally, totally cool. And we've been talking ever since and had a good time. We've flown together quite a few times, done some things both on camera and off. Uh, so it's been, it's been super cool. And, uh, but, but I guess the point of all this is that we've had some pretty neat conversations that I have learned stuff from you. And I think you've actually learned some things from me um in in conversations about content creation and, and different techniques and ways of doing things but I thought it'd be kind of cool because i know there's a lot of people that um that want to get into this in certain certain respects and i think sometimes they might have a uh the wrong view i guess you could say of, of what to expect i know i did it was not uh if, if i had to go back a year ago and tell a year ago me what to expect i don't i don't know if i'd be doing it to be honest with you um, or, or yeah. I would have probably done, I certainly would have done things differently. So what I kind of want to ask you to start off really is, I mean, what, how long, how long ago did you start your channel? Oh, dude, I don't know. I think it's, <laughs> uh, going on three years now, I think yeah. since the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was going to say it's like three or four years. Cause funny enough, and this totally just out of the blue, I was, um, a few days ago, I was doing some searching on, uh, something about track files and servers and stuff. And I came across a question from a young growling sidewinder. It was like three or four years ago. And it was like, Hey guys, I'm getting ready to start a YouTube channel. How do I do this thing with track files? And I think like no one responded to you. Like, <laughs> so I knew. Yeah. I think I remember that. I had to go figure it out on my own. I think. Yeah. Well, and, you're going to uh, tell me. Yeah. 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 Um, Cause as you know, and anyone who, who does content, the track files are the bane of our existence um yes dude but, i've asked the actual ed guys um, really? how to get around that problem and they're they're like i don't know man i mean they have their theories and uh content creators have their own it's a bit of a legend you know people are like if yeah. you do this <laughs> you'll have more success if you dance in a circle five times before you watch the track <laughs> you yeah. might have some success but going back to going back to uh young young gs i mean what why did you do it? Why did you start a channel? What was your goals? Like, what did you think about? So, um, I initially posted videos when I first got into DCS, um, only because I was so amazed by how good it looked at that time. Mm, yeah. And I was just blown away by it. So I wanted to make cinematics and stuff. And it wasn't, I wasn't trying to make a channel. I just uh i was just messing around with it and uh i was like what the hell i'll just upload it and maybe people will watch it who cares and uh on that journey of trying to learn and nobody did watch it by the way <laughs> um on that journey of learning dcs i watched many many tutorials trying to learn things and i was always frustrated by um and also not just dcs tutorials but video editing tutorials as well and I was always frustrated by people um, wasting your time when you're watching these videos. Mm. Um, things that should take seven seconds to explain, you're yes. watching a seven minute video. Um, and that pissed me off, but there was no way around it. And then, you know, I just gradually got more and more frustrated with it. And one day I was like, you know what? You know, you should stop talking so much shit and you should try it yourself. You know, see if you can do better. Like, like you, all you do is sit here and complain about these guys. Can you do any better? So I was like, what the hell? The Hornet dropped, um, around that time period. And I dropped the Hornet radar tutorial just as a, yeah. as a, you know, proof of concept, I guess, just to prove to myself that I could do it and I could do it the right way. And, um, it just took off, dude. People were commenting underneath like, Hey, thanks for just getting to the point. Thanks for 
you know, just, you know, all this stuff that was frustrating me, people were picking it up. So I know that people were also frustrated by that stuff. And when it just took off, it just, people just started watching. Next thing I know, people are subscribing. Next thing I know, people are asking me for tutorials on other things like countermeasures and stuff. And I just, I just did it. There was no intention to make a channel, you know, it just kind of happened. It's interesting. So, so at that time, because I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention to DCS as a, as a community, you know, I'd been playing it for years and years and years, but you know, I, I was too busy and I didn't, I didn't pay it. I was surprised when I saw the amount of content that existed of people you know, doing essentially milsim and stuff. Um, but at that time, it sounds like there was pretty much a vacuum. Like there wasn't a whole lot of people doing that or was it just, you were doing it differently? Uh, you mean like the content creation? Yeah, like like the way you were doing the content and doing these tutorials, so people asking you about radar and stuff like that. I mean, the the only thing that I think I was doing differently um, is that I was just getting to the point, dude. Yeah, you know, like the tutorial would start, and within seven seconds, which at the time my intro was six and a half seconds long, within the seventh second, I was already talking about the radar you know, and just getting to the point. So I think, you know, things that are successful are always fixing a problem, you know, um, you know, filling a void that, you know, doesn't, that exists, you know, there's a need for it. And uh, I guess that was a part of it. I did end up drifting away from tutorials, but that is initially what got the ball rolling. And uh, yeah, man, the, I, I don't know if I would say there was a void there's definitely a lot of tutorials for DCS out there and uh, definitely guys who do it better than me for sure. Um, I just wish, and it's not just DCS is, you know, tutorials about everything. Just get to the point, man. You know? Yeah. There's something to be said for that. I mean, that's the meme, right. Of, of people just skipping through and cause, cause yeah, most people with YouTube, it's like, Hey, welcome to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed and blah, 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 blah. Oh um, my God. Yeah. Don't get me started on that shit. And it's, <laughs> And it's like, if you're just letting YouTube run, then, then yeah, you don't care. But if you're looking for something, yeah, you don't want. To. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause, cause the other side I, of that coin, people are wondering why you would make the videos longer. And it goes back to the algorithm of, well, YouTube wants your video to be eight to 10 minutes and things like that. That's exactly right. Um, unfortunately that is what, I mean, f YouTube is now moving closer and closer to shorter content. Um, one minute to three minutes of content because they're trying to compete with TikTok and all that stuff. But uh, this entire time leading up to even right now, the algorithm does favor longer watch time. Unfortunately, that equals content creators wasting your time to teach you something that should take 35 seconds. You know, you're there for 17 and a half minutes. I mean, that's a little excessive, but most people are, you know, seven, eight minutes, like you said, that's what they're trying to hit that mark. And sometimes even 10 minutes so they can run that ad in the middle. That used to be another part of the algorithm. And so it's like, you know, something 35 seconds goes to 10 minutes. Like, I, I think you can imagine how much that would drive you nuts. Yeah, the, it's and that's the trick that I think guys getting into this have to understand is is that balance of the algorithm. Yes, but you don't want to push people away because then what difference does it make if, if no one's watching your stuff? you know, don't worry about the algorithm. So you, you've got to like draw people. And I think you've probably, you know, I mean, hell, you reached the point where people will watch You can put up a, a 15, 20 minute, you, you can get enough watchers to make it worthwhile. Uh, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but it doesn't matter how big you are. You're going to struggle getting people to watch. It's just like, I've seen, there's some bigger channels when I'm doing research back in the day for the channel, trying to learn the algorithm. There was a couple of guys who were million subscribers and they would show their watch times at the end of the year. They would show their statistics of their channel. And the one guy was getting three and a half to four minutes of watch time. And he's dropping 12, 15 minute videos. It doesn't matter how big your subscriber base is. Um, the human attention span of today's world is just short. Yeah, I've noticed that too in my videos that two, three, four minutes at best. I've never really looked. Yeah, Can you break that down though? Like, 
I guess it's impossible. Not impossible, but it would be a lot of data to look at. Because I'm just kind of curious, like how many of what's throwing that off? Like how many of it are just people showing up, clicking and saying, oh, I don't want to watch this and clicking away. But then how many are actually watching it pretty much straight through? Um, that is a very good question. Um, YouTube analytics doesn't do a great job of, uh, showing that conversion number. Um, because when you click on a video, it's, uh, you get about a 30% drop off in your analytics from a, a click to 10 seconds. It's hard to tell if in those 10 seconds, it's somebody who's just skipping the ad or the intro, or if they're like, oh shit, I clicked that by accident and they're leaving. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's a very difficult analytic to find out. Although there are, you know, once you have enough data points, you can extrapolate that data. But, uh, in terms of like, com like if you're making a good video, here's the thing. Nobody, very few people are accidentally clicking on a picture of a fighter jet, right? Yeah. Or a, a Kiowa or an Apache. Like you click that, you kind of know what you're what you're about to watch and then it becomes your job as a content creator to capture the attention in the first little period at the beginning of the video right if you can do a good job of that you may convert that guy to a subscriber if you don't do a good job of that he's gonna leave you know and so that just comes down to you it's you know youtube will give you exposure people who click on your videos are more than willing to subscribe they're clearly interested in fighter jets and Apaches and Kiowas and Heinz, right? And they're clicking on it because they want to see it. And if they don't stay, it's your fault. Right? No, that's right. I mean, you gotta, it's like the elevator pitch, you know, you've, you've got 30 seconds to, to get somebody's attention and, and make them, make them like you. Um, before we get too far, I know we've got a lot of people in the chat talking and, uh, I want to see if just make sure I didn't miss any, any cool questions that might kind of slip into what we're talking about here? Um, <laughs> it says uh, Growling Sidewinder posts daily. How does he have fun? How does he find time to live life? We'll, we'll talk about that because <laughs> because yeah, that's that's on my list. Like how in the hell? Um, I'm pretty sure yeah, you have a yeah. time machine. Kilo five five says I don't think Growling Sidewinder Growling Sidewinder has ever asked for subs. Yeah, that's uh that's something I I didn't do from the beginning because of that same concept we just talked about. Um, hmm. You have very little time to capture attention and asking people to like and subscribe is it's a waste of that time. And I'm a big believer that if somebody genuinely likes what they see, they're going to subscribe. They're not dumb. They know how YouTube works. You know, they know the like button. If they like it, they'll hit the like button. They don't need you to tell them. And same with the sub button. If they want to see more, they'll sub. You know, I used to do a little three second graphic of touching the subscribe button yeah. three seconds. I don't want to waste your time. It's just three, but that was more of a reminder. Yeah. Right. And then I stopped even doing that. I was, the, the numbers didn't even convert. So I was like, what's the point of even wasting three seconds of their time? You know? No, that's true. I I've, I've, I've done that of the, Hey, make sure you subscribe, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I don't think it matters. I, I think you're right. I think people, they're either going to do it or they don't. And I think the challenge too is sometimes it depends on what they're watching on. Like, cause I used to watch a lot of YouTube on TV. It's kind of a, it's kind of a pain to go through the process of driving, but, um, easy to do on your phone or something like that. Um, yeah. but that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, cause you're, you're basically just, you're putting it all on the line of like the quality of the content is what matters. Yeah. And I think that's really important for you as a content creator, right? Like, stop asking for people to subscribe to you instead give them content that would make them want to subscribe it's you know just if you do that well enough they will subscribe and if you do that your content will continually get better and better as you you know try to increase those numbers so let's talk about uh thumbnails we had a conversation last week about this and i thought it was pretty interesting because you've you've clearly put a lot of thought into it and um and anyone who's seen your thumbnails knows that you put a lot of effort into it um you know i'd seen or, or heard somebody talk about how they spent just as much time on their thumbnail design as they do on the videos that they produce and it sounds silly but the the, the point being is that that thumbnail is that's your that's your introduction because there's a whole bunch of stuff on the screen 
what am I going to pick? And just like you said, well, that looks cool. I'm going to pick on that. So talk a little bit about thumbnails to you. So thumbnails are super, super tricky and a little bit of a phenomenon. And so I say that because I've seen the guys who get really big, the million, the PewDiePie's and the Mr. Beasts with the 50 to 90 million subscribers, these guys can put up an absolute dog shit thumbnail and still get 20 million views, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, if the name is known and the algorithm is promoting your content, you're going to get your views either way. But for those of us who are towards the bottom and you're trying to fight for those views, you're trying to get people to click you, they don't know who you are, the thumbnail is valuable real estate to you. Um, you can create a video that's absolutely golden, right? It could be the greatest video YouTube's ever seen. <laughs> but if your thumbnail doesn't attract attention, nobody will see it, right? So the thumbnail is extremely important. Um, I find a lot of people know that. When you say that, they're, they're like, yeah, I mean, of course, you're not saying anything, sure. you know, revolutionary here. Yet when they upload their videos, you can see there's like little to no effort in the thumbnail. And at the same time, you got to you gotta stay away from those clickbaity thumbnails. I hate the videos of people with their mouths open and like a shocked face. Big googly I eyes. I hate that. Yeah, I hate that so much. Like they're telling you like, oh, here's a feature of an iPhone that you never knew about. And the guy is in a state of shock as if like you just told him his family died. It's like, dude, this doesn't, you know, this, it doesn't translate. People see how fake that is. And you know, there's there's research out there where people see like, hey, uh, facial reactions in YouTube thumbnails uh, correlates with um, increased clicking of the of the video. Um, that was true back in the day when thumbnails had just been introduced into YouTube and people were just taking screenshots of the video, which happened to have their face in it. Um, it didn't translate that much once people figured that out and then started making fake facial reaction thumbnails um with red arrows and you know shocked faces and crap like that and um i i, I forget where i was going with that but generally just don't try to mislead in the thumbnail um you don't we want to give a sample of what you're what they're seeing in the video um like if i have a thumb if i have a, a dog fight between f14 and f15 i'm going to find a way to show you those two aircraft in the thumbnail um in an interesting way and that's it. That's all I can give you. If that doesn't interest you, then this video is not for you, right? Yeah. I mean, you're trying to tell a story in a thumbnail, let people know, walk it into what, what they're going to, what they can expect and, and then do it in a, in a somewhat artistic way. But yeah, the, the reaction that Brennus is bringing it up in the chat. Um, and I've done it as a, as a joke because I, 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 I laugh every time I see, you know, Albanian soldier reacts to AC-130. Well, why yes. do I care? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. let's not act like this is new technology. I mean, this shit's been around for years and years and years. So you're just now finding out about it, and we care about your reaction. Why? And yet, he'll have you know, it'll three million views or something. So I think it's um, I think it's important to not look at the numbers when it comes to videos that are so far out left field from what you do. Um. Because it'll it'll start to kick you in the gut. Like today, I, I, I was just cruising around YouTube and I came across a uh, naval aviator flying um, like the, the, the planes that deliver mail. Uh, you know, whatever, the Greyhounds or whatever. And it was like one million views. And it was like my first time on a catapult. Like a million views to watch that, you know, and, but, <laughs> and you'll get frustrated. You're like, I got 500 views and I, you know, on this doesn't matter. It's not the same kind of content. So, you know, you're, yeah. you're reaching a different crowd. Um, yeah, the thumbnails though, I will tell you, I, I've, I've slowly been learning and coming around to it because I think I told you this before, you know, it used to be when I put up a video, I was uploading it, you know, on the little thing showing it it's uploaded. I'm like, Oh crap, I need a thumbnail. And I would quickly find a picture and kind of slap some words on it and stuff. And, you know, that's not enough because like you said, that's, that's your introduction. That's your handshake. Right? I mean, if you give a, a weak little floppy handshake, you know, that's, that's the first impression, yeah. but you're, you're, 
you know, putting it out there with a, a big ass, nice thumbnail, like, like you typically do. That's, that's firm. And dude, that thumbnail creation is something that, you know, gets built over time. Um, but as long as you know that you should care about it, you'll get better and better at it. Um, you look back at some of my earlier thumbnails and I purposely haven't gone back and fixed those because I want, I like to look back at them and be like, wow, look at how dog shit I used to be, <laughs> you know? And that makes me feel good. I can be like, yeah, look at my improvement. I've come all this way, but you know, you look at my old thumbnails, they're garbage, dude. And as time progresses, you can see, you can literally see effort going into those thumbnails up until you actually start to get better and better at it. And even today, I still find myself researching and trying to find out how to make that initial thumbnail better. Um, because again, if you can't get them to click, it doesn't matter how good your video is. Well, and that kind of brings up a good point to, uh, researching and, you know, I've talked to other guys that I, I used to watch quite a bit of YouTube, probably in the year leading up to when I started my, my channel. And then I started my channel and I stopped watching other people's stuff cause I didn't have the time. You know, and I heard one guy say that the, the problem is once you become a content creator, if you're watching someone else's stuff, that's time you could be working on your own stuff. And that, that's what kind of goes through your head. Um, and then I've started to sort of recently realize like, well, that's how you get stagnant. You don't learn anything because you may think that you're doing things best, but it turns out Joe over there is doing things a little bit better and you could learn something from the way he does it, but you're not watching it. So you're not paying attention. Um, you know, my wife is a writer and she, and she just said this the other day. She was like, you know, when I'm, when I'm not reading, I notice that my writing isn't great. Um, for you, do you watch a lot of other people's stuff or are you just kind of laser beam focused on what you got going? So what you're saying is something super interesting. Um, again, it's, it's almost a phenomenon because I also find myself struggling to have enough time to post videos daily, but also to um, have a life <laughs> as the comment section said, <laughs> um, which leaves very little time to watch other content. Um, that being said, unfortunately I find if you watch too much of somebody else's content, you unconsciously start to mimic that content a little bit. You see aspects of it showing up in yours, especially if you are impressed with that content. Uh, and that's very difficult for you to identify and avoid because it's unconscious and it's out of admiration. Like you like this guy's content, right? So obviously you're trying to be better. You like this guy's content. Well, it just naturally you're going to gravitate towards something that's very similar to him. So for a long time, I did avoid that. Um, but if, listen, if a thumbnail comes up that I think is interesting, I'll click it, dude. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I'll click it. Um, I, and sometimes I'm, I'm out there looking for stuff to learn. And I'll be honest, your channel is one of the channels, one of the DCS content creators in years that when I found it, I subbed to it because the content was actually something I wanted to learn about. You know, I, I was like, oh, here's a guy. And I heard somebody told me about you, which is how I came across the channel they're like hey did you know that there is an apache kiowa pilot who's teaching people how to fly a helicopter i was like what what is this guy's name and i go instantly i'm gonna sub to that i watch a couple of videos i see you uh i think the first video i saw was the one where you were talking about um you know getting some altitude and looking down to shoot the rockets instead of like flying ground level to shoot rockets um and i was like that is so common sense but i didn't think of that because i'm a <laughs> right. dumbass I was like, of course, I'm going to sub to this guy. He's teaching actual stuff, you know, so that but that's it. Like if I find a content creator who's creating something I enjoy or something I'm looking for, I will sub to that and I will watch that just for my learning, not necessarily um, to make the videos better. I think you already know what you need to do to make your videos better. You know what I mean? Like if I told you, hey, give me 10 things that you think you need to improve on. You already have those 10 things. I don't think you knew them because you watched you know, Jim Bob's YouTube channel, you already know what you need to improve. No, I think that's true. And I, I think a lot of it, like you said, is common sense. I mean, even the things that we're talking about, just like the, just the thumbnails in general, like you need to have good thumbnails. Oh, well, no kidding. I think a lot of people just struggle to understand what that work 
entails. And I think that's across the board with all content creators. I don't think anyone goes into this understanding the, the amount of hustle that, that you've got to put yeah. in. I mean, did you, like, at what point did you suddenly, like, look back and say, holy crap, I've been working hard to get where I'm at? Uh, I don't think I've had a chance to look back yet, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> uh, it's just, you're constantly, you got your head down driving, dude. Um, very little time to look back. I, I think, I mean, I think I realize it, you know, there's the success and the channel grows and you know, you're like, Hey, you know, I, I have been working hard, you know, it is true. And it's something, sometimes you have this weird, um, imposter syndrome that kicks in. Like, you're like, Oh, I'm, I must be living someone else's life. Like I don't have a YouTube channel that's successful and people enjoy watching it. You know, I, like I must've lied somewhere along the way to be what, I, and then I realized that I never did that. I didn't tell anybody I was a real pilot. Uh, I didn't um, do anything like that and everything's organic and I'm actually not an imposter. You have to, t I, I find myself having to tell myself that I'm like, you, you yeah. didn't make up anything. This is like legitimate success that you've worked hard to achieve. And that's, it's nice. It comforts me for five minutes and then I get back to making more content. So unfortunately you don't get to dwindle on that at all. So no, that's a good point. And, and I want to kind of point that out to the, to the people watching people that'll watch this later. Um, you know, we, we were talking a week or two ago and I was like, Oh, I want you to teach me some Hornet stuff. And you were, and you were very hesitant. And I want to say that I want to share this story because I think it speaks to, to you being humble and understanding, uh, you know, that one doesn't equal the other, right. That you're not, in no way, shape, or form would ever stand up in a room and say, well, I'm pretty good at DCS, so I can go fly Hornet, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. But I don't think there's any denying that you're really good at what you do within the construct of DCS, and, and you should be proud of that and not ashamed of that. Yeah, your channel has grown because you've worked hard and, and you've done good things, um, but but you are humble about it, I, I think. Um, and, and I say that because you've done it in private, right? It's not just that, that sort of public humility, but in private, no, totally... It's totally who you are. And I mean, I, I looked at your page today, 191,000 subscribers. I mean, that's, that's huge. I mean, there's, there's, there's people I watch that have really good content well below that number. So yeah, you've created something pretty big and pretty awesome. to be proud of it. Um, well, I appreciate that, man. And I, I think hum, uh, being humble is a, is a big part of that. And it's something I see from you as well. Um, I don't know why you're humble. Um, I think you shouldn't be. I think you've achieved a lot in your life that you should be bragging about, but that's just your personality, I guess. Um, but just the overall, man, I like, um, I don't, I don't like people who aren't humble. I don't care what you've done in your life. Uh, I don't care if you're the queen of England, if you're not humble, I, I really don't want anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. Um, and people who have achieved the most in their life are usually the most humble not saying that about myself like you look right. at some of these guys i've been watching youtube videos of medal of honor recipients and uh the guy doesn't feel like he deserves it at all you know like that's the guy who's gonna do something like that and is truly humble like no medal of honor recipient is like yo i, I am the shit you know yeah. <laughs> humility goes a long way and i i think for me um I'm always ready for the, the other shoe to drop in, in the sense that um, if something bad hasn't happened, it's about to. And so, you know, I feel like if I ever step out of the human, like I'll joke around and be like, oh, I'm the best pilot there is. And I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, and I make it a, a joke, but I feel like I'm one of those people, like if I do step outside of that humility bound and, and actually think that, oh, I'm, I'm king shit, that's when something's going to happen and it's, it's going to torpedo yes. me. So I, I prefer to stay at an even keel across the board as much as I can. And, and I've, you know, I've built in, uh, fail safes with people. I've, I've told people on the side, like, look, if you ever see me stepping out of line, you, you call me out on it immediately. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think it's good to have, have that kind of back, um, or, or, you know, backup that, that can help you. Um, I want to go back. Cause again, there's been a lot of, a lot of discussion. He says your content is aimed at a fairly specific audience with built in interest. And I, and I think what he means by that, because you've said this when we've talked, you know, your helicopter videos bomb, 
in the sense of your normal viewership, your helicopter ones don't do well at all. Do you find that the thumbnails generate new viewers brought in from outside the ecosystem? Um, I don't know if you can even answer that or if you have any um, thoughts. that crazy brings up any thoughts. So here is an interesting little thing that has been happening on the channel. I've been watching it. Um, the helicopter content wasn't doing really well at the beginning. Um, I've always been interested in helicopters. It was actually the first module I bought in DCS was a KA-50. Um, but I kind of drifted away from it. Helicopter co content wasn't doing well. And then all of a sudden, dude, I start dropping these helicopter videos with cool thumbnails and they have 186,000 views, 63,000 views, 61,000. The one with you, 51,000. And the one with uh, long shot, another. So here's what's happening, in my opinion. The thumbnails, the videos are interesting. People are clicking them. A lot of them are just funny. It's us fighting a Huey or a Huey getting its ass kicked behind. Um, it's not intended to be anything other than entertainment. But people are clicking it because the thumbnail is interesting. And then they're finding that, hey, I don't really mind the helicopter content. You know, so the, the, the thumbnail is actually what's generating the interest. Um, and, you know, spiking the curiosity to just click it and see what this is about anyway. And then it goes back to the first thing we talked about. Um, you have very limited time to capture that attention, right? So don't waste time on stupid shit. Um, you know, talking about stuff like, you know, you're trying to make a funny video. Why are you telling people how to cold start the hind, for example, right? I'm just making that up, but like, that doesn't matter. So just jump into whatever you're making. So yeah, I do think that it does generate new viewers. The thumbnails do contribute to generating new viewers just because it is through the, th the thumbnail that you generate curiosity to even click and give that content a chance. I'd be interested, I don't, you probably don't know this off the top of your head, but what your, your viewer to subscriber rate? Viewer to subscriber ratio. Oh, you mean like how many people are watching the videos that are subscribed versus yeah. unsubscribed. Yeah. Okay, so I have a forty percent subscribed and okay. sixty percent not subscribed. So that would tell me that the thumbnails are just bringing randos in. Yeah, yeah, they might be. And here's the thing: when somebody clicks on one of your videos, multiple of your other videos show up on the side, assuming that you've done your search engine optimization correctly um, your other videos should show up on the side of the screen um, and that may translate i've had a lot of comments of people being like i i've watched so many of your videos i can't believe i haven't subscribed yet yeah. and that's where i think back to oh would it have been good if i had reminded them to subscribe yeah but then again i'm like i don't care dude like the numbers are always going up and I'm happy with the growth. I, you know, it, I'm not expecting anything insane. And if you like the content enough, you're going to subscribe. You're going to remember this guy just reminded himself to subscribe. It yeah. just took him maybe three months to do it, but he finally did it. Who cares? Right. Right. And I think it takes away a lot from your content when you constantly are reminding people to, to sub, to sub. So, and there are a lot of randos, dude. There's a lot of oh, randos. Yeah. There's a lot of interested people in this kind of content who want to see fighter jets dogfight, who want to see you, a real Apache pilot, fly a helicopter around. There's a lot of randos who, I like, I do that, dude. You know how many videos like that I click on? Like, I just randomly see A-10 does a gun run on ISIS car. I'm right. going to click on that. Like, yeah. <laughs> of course I'm going to watch that, you know? But, uh, and I'm not going to sub to the guy. Because I'm just curious right. as to the content. I'm not necessarily, but if if that guy continues to post videos like that, that clearly spike my interest. After a couple of of his videos, I'm going to be like, wait a minute, this is actually kind of interesting stuff. And then I sub to it, right? I mean, it's funny. I didn't subscribe to so many. Like I, I mean, I would watch your stuff. I would watch Wolfpack. I would watch Ralphie. There was there was a there was a a bunch of dudes that I would watch, and I didn't subscribe because. Again, I was watching usually on TV late at night and couldn't be bothered with it. But and then when I became a content creator and I was still watching your guys' stuff and I was like, oh man, I 
now I realize, you know, how, how important overall, overall that stuff is. And so I would go back and subscribe, subscribe. So, um, you know, for everyone that is watching, it is, it is obviously helpful to the channel. It, it feeds into the analytics and all that stuff. Um, I don't think that we need to be a, a, a shill about it and be like, Oh, subscribe, 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 go to Patreon, blah, 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 do all this stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. that stuff kind of sorts itself out generally. I mean, you want to, that's the hard part. And I think, you know, we kind of transition talk about branding because I think that's the hardest part when you are humble with humility, it becomes very difficult to grow your brand because you have to promote yourself. Um, and that's hard yes. when you don't have an ego to, to back it up. Even if you think your stuff is good, you know, and, and I'll kind of share this when, when I first started my channel, the whole reason that I started it was because quite frankly, I did see so much jet stuff. And I was like, I just don't think anyone is telling the story on the helicopter side. And I think if people saw it, they would be a little bit more interested. And so that's what drove me to it. But at the same time, I was incredibly reluctant to really tout, you know, that I was a helicopter pilot. Like I, I put it in there, but I didn't make a big deal out of it. And uh, a, a good friend of mine that was flying with me a lot in DCS back then, you know, he told me, he's like, dude, you've, you've got to mention it. You've got to bring it up more. Um, because that's what people will draw, draw you in, but it's hard to do that branding. Uh, talk about that for you. I mean, did you, how did you get that brand out there or was it completely, you just let the chips fall where they may? Uh, I, I kind of looked at it as a free market system. If the content is good, they will come you know and I, I mean unlike you i have nothing to promote you know I, i'm not a real pilot i never claimed to be i never even claimed to know what i was talking about um in the beginning of the channel i always made it very very clear to everybody that hey i am learning as i go like i literally just got dcs six months ago and i'm learning as i go and if you guys know what i'm doing wrong let me know right I never phrased it as I'm the best, watch me. You know, at the beginning, I posted videos where I was getting killed by AI. Not just killed, I was getting like decimated <laughs> by AI, you know? Um, I was just learning. I was just trying to put out videos for entertainment. Um, back to what you're saying, though, like not wanting to, to say that you're a real um, helicopter pilot and all that. It's like, yeah, I, I understand that and wanting to be... Um, I don't know, humble about it and not promote and self-promote and all that stuff. But I feel like that scenario is a little bit different because mm -hmm. it's really, it's like a credibility thing. Like you're yeah. saying, this is how I fly helicopters, but it's also very important for me to know that, oh, this guy's a real helicopter pilot who's telling me that, you know, maybe I should shut up. And like, if I think I know something and he's saying the opposite, maybe I should shut up. You know, he probably yeah. knows better than I do. Um, so when it comes down to a credibility issue, I think it is important to let people know, hey, I was a real pilot. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to go around and be like, you know, uh, I'm a fighter pilot with, uh, you know, seven confirmed kills, four tanks, <laughs> you know, all this shit. It's like, OK, like tone it down. You know, if somebody asks, you can tell them. But there's no like that's a different level of self-promotion. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a. Uh... Uh, it's a fine line, you know, between swagger and, uh, and humility and, and really swagger and just being kind of over the top. Um, and I think that that's at least for military pilots, you know, it's very easy for us to, to see another guy and, and be like, okay, that guy's over the top. You know, he's just, he's just hamming it up. Um, and so I, I certainly try to avoid that as much as I can, or if I do it, it's really fun but um but you're right credibility and that kind of goes back to one of the things that i wanted to talk about too is uh, and there's people there's probably in people chat right now there's people that are going to watch this there's you know some of them they, they want to build a youtube channel or they have a youtube channel and they don't have that many subscribers um it's hard especially now i think there's just more and more content out there and so you're competing against a larger larger bracket of people but it's hard to get your name out there when you I hate to say it, this is going to sound rude when I say it, I don't mean to, but when you don't have any credibility, when you're just a dude that 
Like, why should I care what dude X thinks over dude Y? Um, what, what do you say to that? Like, like for somebody who's starting out or maybe they've been grinding away for a year and they're sitting at 50 subscribers, hundred subscribers. I mean, other than, other than make sure you have good content and make sure you have good thumbnails. I mean, what, what, what do you tell a guy like that? Um, actually this is, this is an interesting thing you bring up. Um, I, I think in today's world, a lot of people feel like they're owed something. Um, only if you put 7,000 hours into your YouTube channel and you still have 50 subscribers, um, that sucks for you. Yeah. Um, not for everyone. you're not owed. Yeah. You're not <laughs> owed. You're not owed something by these people just because you put 7,000 hours doesn't mean they have to subscribe. Doesn't mean they have to watch. Um, if you only have 50 subscribers, it's because you've refused to innovate and to get better. And I, I guarantee you, if you look at a channel like that, um, who's been stagnant for years, the, the videos today are the same as seven years ago. You've made no effort to get better. Um, when I first, you know, was putting up my first couple of videos, I was getting like two or three subscribers and mm -hmm. they were giving me constructive, constructive criticism. They were saying like, Hey dude, um, cinematics are they're cool but like you know you're changing frames a little too quickly it's hard on the eyes you could take that you can be offended by it and be like you know screw that guy or you could be like hey you know that's actually a good point and maybe i should tone it down a little and then you start to learn things your next video it's not so hard on the eyes your third video you make another improvement your fourth one and then you know eventually you end up with subscribers but this idea that you're owed something because you've put in time. It's, uh, I, I have no sympathy for it quite honestly. And I've tried a lot of things in my life and I failed at it. And, um, I, I, you can't blame anyone but yourself. You know, you didn't put in the time that was necessary. You didn't put in the, the research that was necessary to become successful. Yeah. The, the hustle is more than just making the video. In fact, I, I think that that's probably the easiest part some ways is just making the content it's the promoting it it's the making it not just making the video but making it you know like you said something that somebody's gonna see and, and latch onto and want to stay to see the rest of it um but that's part of the grind is is getting your name out there and, and telling people why they care and i you know it's funny i sometimes you know i get down like we all do i'm sure you do um we all do because we look at our numbers and we're like oh Feel like that video should have done better or oh, i thought i was going to hit this milestone of subscribers and i didn't you know and you just it's natural i think as a content creator for anything music or whatever you do um mm -hmm. and i sometimes have to remind myself like i started this channel 15 months ago you know and i'll probably hit 10,000 by the end of the month if, if things keep going the way they've been going you know roughly 10,000 by the end of the month. it's pretty good like i have nothing to complain about um but it's, it's easy to kind of get down on yourself. But I also have to remind myself, like I had a leg up because I, I did have a little bit of credibility that I could leverage. And so I guess what I'm saying is for people, you know, some people in the, in the chat that have said, you know, I've got 30 ones. I have eight, you know, one, one for all I know, you're just throwing stuff up just for fun. You know, like you're not trying to make something out of your channel. You're, you know, you're just sharing video. That's fine you probably don't care but but if you're that guy that wants to just grind it out you want to be the next growling sidewinder or you want to be the next operator drewski or you know all these dudes with these big numbers um yeah you got to find that way to either have credibility uh or you got to innovate and just go over the top and find something that works you can't just watch a growling sidewinder video and say well i'm going to do what he's doing and probably in the next year i'll be as big as him it just that math doesn't work out. Yeah, and I think it's important to fill a void. You always have to give the community something, whether that's DCS or just an invention, a general invention, right? Um, if you don't fill a void, if you don't, you know, answer a need, you're just not going to be successful. And I think that's that's part. Of, like when I started off with the tutorials, I ended up gravitating towards dogfighting because 
I saw that that's where people, you know, were the most interested. There wasn't a lot of information about BFM tactics out there. I don't want to say I knew a lot and I wanted to come and teach everybody. I didn't know shit at that time. But I was like, oh, this is an interesting thing to grow into and learn about and show on the channel, right? Um, you, you know, you said you you did the helicopter stuff because you felt like people weren't really picking up on that. Um, you, I think it's important that not only is the effort important, but there is a little bit of luck involved as well. Very little. I want to say like it's, you know, one or 2% luck. Most of it is hard work. And uh, the rest of it is you have to answer uh, a need, right? Find out what kind of content isn't really out there. And to be honest, the kind of content that probably needs to be out there is probably the kind of content you want to see but doesn't exist. You probably already know the answer, you know? So you just have to fill that void. And I think that's the ingredients to success right there. Uh, let's do a couple questions. Uh we do you ever just get tired of it and want to step away? Yeah, daily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. All the time. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bullshit that comes with being a content creator. Um, uh, as they say, uh, all things in life, you know, they should be balanced. And I find that they are oftentimes. Right. Um, people think content creation is such a, you know, awesome thing. It must be so much fun. You know, you just, there's so much bullshit in the background of it that sometimes you're like, you know, if I, if I was to win the lottery today, win like $35 million today, would I continue to post videos? I like to think that I would, but I don't know if I would, cause there's so much bullshit. And it's like, why do I need to put up with that now? You know, once I have the money, like I'll just get a yacht and go to Hawaii. All right. Yeah, well, you could just hire people to do all the editing for you at that point. I mean, the editing's half of it, dude, but there's there's like Yeah. Oh, uh, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a sample of that recently, so <laughs> Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, I mean, that's worth talking about. So, cuz that was one of my questions dealing with with people and and criticism. Um and you kind of touched on it before where it's hard especially in a international environment because you've got people from all over the world who English is not their first language and they will say things that are critical and it just comes off really just raw. Like it just comes off like so, uh, and, and they don't mean it that way. Um, and then there's some people that do give you good constructive criticism. And then there's some people that are just like jerks in the way that they deliver things. And that's very frustrating because you, you don't want to come off the top rope and just be like, well, you're, you shouldn't say, that. you know, um, you want to take what you can from it, but it is challenging, especially some days. There are some days where I have bad days and I walk away from discord. I'm like, I can't, I can't watch any of the shenanigans going on in the discord today, or I can't read any comments in my videos because I know that I will, I will take it at the worst way that it can be taken. And I will probably say something that I can't that I can't pull back and that I'm going to regret. Um, mm -hmm. You have a huge Discord. I was looking at it today. It's like 12,000 people or something. It's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how hands-on are you with that anymore? So the Discord, um, I was never super hands-on with. I, I was lucky that I was approached by a guy named Sly at the beginning who really helped me set all of that up. Um, but... I've always tried to just pop in there every now and then when I have free time and just talk to people. Um, I think it's important to just connect with the community. Um, actually, the Discord is one of the chiller places for me. Um, I don't usually have a lot of problems over Discord, but no, uh, I don't. It's like you said, yeah, it's the it's the the criticisms of people who I don't even want to call them criticisms because they're not. Um, it's just a right. guy being an asshole, and he only does that because he's on YouTube and he's anonymous. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. I would bet money in real life. He wouldn't say that to your face and internet bravery. Yeah, there's that. And maybe he's, maybe it's not just bravery. Maybe he's just not that much of an asshole, but just being anonymous makes you an asshole. Um, so there's these, these two different kinds of people online. There's people who criticize you 
um, with the intention to point something out that you should improve. And those people are always nice. They're always nice. They're always, hey, I like this video, but can you please tone the music down a little? You just made my ears bleed or something like that. You yeah. know? And you're like, hey, dude, yeah, my bad. Like, I'll fix that. You don't feel defensive by that comment. And then there's the guy who is who starts off the comment with, this is such a pile of bullshit. And it, that's when I stop reading. Yeah. I don't need your dog shit in my life. I don't need this comment is clearly not intended to be helpful in any way. And so I'm not even going to bother reading. Like I stop right there. I'm done, dude. You know, and even if you were going to say something helpful, you just lost it. I'm not going right. to read anymore. Right. Any chance you had of being heard is now gone. So. No, that's delivery matters so much. And, and that's true just across the board. And, and I have been very fortunate in, in delivery for most people. Um, but every now and then, yeah, you're going to get that. And that's something that I, that everyone has to prepare for. If you're, if you're serious about getting in any, any sort of content creation is somebody somewhere is going to critique it and you have to guess cage your brain to just understand that that's coming and don't focus on it. You know, when I was, I, I did a, a stint in the army where I was teaching and in my very first class, I had a student who I could tell he was just disengaged. Like he was a smart kid, but he just didn't give a shit. And I spent so much of that class trying to get through to him, focusing on him, that I ignored the other 11 people in the class. And, and when the, you know, it was a three week course that we would run every like, so, and I remember being done with it and realizing that, and luckily it was like the very first class I'd ever done. And so I, I was able to fix myself early, but I kind of came to my, that conclusion is like, I focused so much onto that negativity and then I, 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 I ignored all the positivity. And so, and you'll do that in content creation because I think YouTube's changed it uh, with the the thumbs down, like they're not as obvious or something. But, and I would post a video and have like, you know, 150 thumbs up and then like two thumbs down. And you're just like, oh my God, what, what happened? You know, and it, it could be something as in, innocuous as why well, I just didn't want to watch this video and I don't want it in my algorithm or, you know, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't take the thumbs down personally. It's hard at first because you're like, hey, because uh, unfortunately, the first videos you put out are the hardest for you because you're so new to it. So yeah. something that maybe takes you three hours to edit now maybe took you three weeks to edit back then. So you upload this thing, you put in so much work and then it gets like three downvotes and you just completely forget about the 300 upvotes that you had. Yeah. And you're just locked in on these three downvotes and you're like, oh my God, what happened? How did this happen? What don't they like? You just, but now I've gotten to a point where I don't even see, I don't even look at that. So yeah, it's just right. gone. You just don't care anymore. Cause like you said, you realize that, yeah, that's what it is. It's a, uh, it could be something as basic as they didn't like the music <laughs> for right. some people. That's enough for them to downvote something. All right, mm -hmm. fine. You know, but in your head, you're like, oh, he must absolutely hate this video yeah. you know but he probably actually kind of liked it he just didn't like the video so he was like all right here's a thumbs down yeah just to let him know <laughs> i don't know it's just yeah you can't read into that garbage man and not not only that we need to go back to your question do you ever get tired of it you know sometimes it, it, I, I put a lot of effort into some of my videos i'll be honest some of them i don't um but when you do put a lot into it and you see it just not do that well, yeah, sometimes it's like, man, why do I do this to myself? Because you put a lot of hours. And you, when you're at my level, like YouTube ad revenue isn't like, it's not paying for the house. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah. so after a while, you're kind of like, well, is it worth the time? So it has to be something that there's a little bit of passion with, um, yep. which reminds me of a phrase that don't confuse, uh, what was it? Don't confuse passion with, competency or something like that. And and I think that goes back to your comments earlier about if you've got 50 subscribers and you're putting 7,000 hours in your work, that doesn't matter. Like it doesn't, don't confuse your passion with your videos being good. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, does it cost money to be a creator for add-ons and mods? Um, I, I don't think, I don't think so. I mean, I've put money into doing this stuff because quite frankly, I can, and I, I have some money that I can spend. Um, but I, you really don't, other than just having what you have to play DCS, 
honestly, there's not much to it. I mean, I use uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is free and is amazing editor. That's absolutely free. What you use, uh, what do you use, Photo or? Uh... So I use Premiere Pro, but I completely go 180 on that answer relative to you. It's cost me a shit ton of money to uh, get this thing off the ground. And is that because of buying it, a new computer? Yeah, so uh, my theory was just, if you're going to do this and you want to be successful at it, you have to get the best stuff for the job so that you're not limited by your hardware, right? Um, totally unnecessary. Um, but I, like, for example, think about the fact that you need to own almost all of the modules. Um, a lot of people okay. think ED has just given me modules. They haven't. Um, they have also um, offered it to me towards the end here. ED has been like, hey, um, since you are showing this off for us, could you, here's like a free, we'll hook you up with, you know, the free hind or whatever. And I don't actually take that. I find it ethically not cool because I, I enjoy what they do. So I, I want to support them. Um, they're being kind enough to offer it for free, but I, I still want to pay. I, I, I pay the early access because that's what my content is and I support the company and, you know, so yeah, it does. It, like if I wasn't a content creator, there's probably a, a bunch of planes I wouldn't own. So it's not an extravagant cost. Yeah, that's fair. You know, but there is some cost, I guess. Yeah, I mean, when I say there's no cost, I mean, you know, when I started, I had a eh, computer and I gave it probably six months of doing the content creation. And I finally, you know, I got monetized on YouTube and I was like, well, this is not a lot of money, but I'd already wanted a new computer. So kind of use it as an excuse to get one. And certainly I've spent money on, on stuff. I mean, this microphone I'm using, but I guess my point is you don't have to do that. But you will, if you really get into it, you will, you will end up doing it. I think, especially if you do live streaming, I think live streaming lends itself to wanting more, more equipment. But again, you don't need it, but, uh, but I agree with you as well that you're probably going to buy, I've bought modules for DCS. I would have never bought, you know, it's like yeah. I bought it cause I had a plan to do something and I'd never touch it again. Like the Vigan, I had to fly that thing, but I bought it. Dude, I was going to do some stuff. <laughs> That's my one that I still haven't made a video with and I still haven't brought Ooh. myself to learn it and I've owned it for so long and I bought it only because I was like, oh, I'll make content with it and just never touched it. So, yeah. Well, there we go. We need to we'll team up and do tutorials. Do some vegan. vegan stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know plenty of people that don't know how to use it. Um, <laughs> is it hard to balance work, family life? Uh yeah, I mean, I'll start with that, and then yes, can yeah. can talk about his side of it because I know he's he doesn't have children. I have four kids, two of which want to be YouTubers. One is fifteen, the other is ten. <laughs> and the ten-year-old records himself playing games and then watches himself, and just wants to be. And he's he'd honestly be a really good streamer, um, just because he's constantly talking. He's just he's always got something going on. But yeah, it is hard um to find it because. And I, th I think you can definitely back me up on this. There's a compelling feeling that I've got to put content out. I've got to put something out um, and it takes time and you want it to be good. So now you're spending hours and hours and hours editing and it's hard to edit when you've got to get pulled away every 10 seconds to do something for the kids or you're going to make dinner or you do random stuff. So it's incredibly hard. I think for me, that's probably the biggest challenge of being a content of any type is, is balancing family and, uh, and, and just life in general, what, what do you say? Um, I would absolutely agree with that. I think when I first started, um, I didn't have, you know, I, I wasn't looking at time. I was just spending whatever time I wanted doing the videos and the content creation. It was kind of chaotic, just whenever I wanted to, I would. Um, but as it's become a bigger channel and I'm trying to put out more content, um, recently got married here a couple months ago too so trying to give the wife the attention that women deserve um happy wife happy life i uh you kind of gotta end up with this thing where you're like hey i'm gonna put a hard stop on when i'm gonna stop working um i'm yeah. gonna start at whatever time nine o'clock in the morning let's say and at 3 p.m i'm done and if I got stuff done, I got stuff done. If I didn't, I didn't. It's gone. And that's your work day. You know, it's like any other job. If you don't finish by 3 p.m., you know, you go home. 
you don't worry about it till the next the next day it's it takes a lot of discipline actually it's a lot harder than you know you would think and it's something i struggle with right now i'm like well just you know just give me another hour you know but yeah yeah dude you just gotta you gotta just you know get the time you, you can't let it consume you and at the end of the day family is more important than anything else so yeah because they're going to be there long after your youtube channel fails yeah <laughs> and that's what yeah. we you know say in the military too it's like because military like a lot of jobs will will suck the ever life out of you and sometimes you have to pull your head back and say okay one day the army's gonna be done with me but i'm still gonna have kids i may still have a wife you know um <laughs> and so you, you've got to keep that in mind but uh snappy comebacks are you both fully uh, full-time employed um technically i am but i'm in the middle of retiring from the military and they're not asking me really to do anything so i have a lot of which is another reason that i'm able to do the things i do um you work but you you put out videos all the time how do you how uh dude this is actually something that i'm still working to crack the code on um what, the limiting factor like i've gotten pretty good at editing um like time wise i, I know what i'm doing in the program so i'm fairly quick uh, i've gotten decently good with the the camera angles of vcs to the point where i'm happy personally so all that stuff doesn't take too much of my time the limb fact here is the creative aspect of what do i do what video do i make like i'm all out of ideas and you know i uh, that's the if if you can crack that if you can somehow always have a backlog of content ready to go you'll never run out of stuff to make um unfortunately there is some quality control that's needed there i've had a lot of ideas that sounded really good and then when i go to do them i'm like this is the dumbest shit yeah <laughs> i can never post this <laughs> you yeah. know so um you know that that's it it's i i've kind of gotten i'm putting more time on the creative aspect of it instead of just sitting at the computer and expecting an idea to come to me um i'll spend a day where i'll just come up with like a bunch of ideas and then i'll sit down and record it over the coming weeks i'll have a whole bunch of ideas and then i'm not limited there's no you know limiting factor for me at that point it's all how much time do i need to edit and record the stuff that's the only thing left which like i said is pretty simple so yeah i think just recording especially if it's just gameplay is easy tutorials are, are hard because it's not just a matter of turn on the game here's how here, push this button this button this button but you've got to you've got to have a flow you've got to have your your words make sense and not be a lot of um okay um we're gonna look over here oh here okay yeah this button right here yeah. that i'm not i'm not watching your shit i don't care who you are you could be buzz yeah. aldrin telling yeah. me how to land on the moon if you talk like that i'm probably not gonna watch stuff <laughs> um and so you got to have yeah. a good flow and that's that's work and getting that so that's why i mean when i did those apache like just enter here's what apaches do like it wasn't even in dcs and it was so much work to do those and the only thing that kept me going is they were doing really well um but it's not something that i want to do all the time but if you're just doing sort of just like a dogfight or you're doing, you know, a ground attack or something like that, it's relatively easy to kind of to put that out. But you've said something that's right up, I think everyone's alley is, is after a while you just run out of ideas. I have people all the time comment like, oh, you should do a tutorial on this. And it's like, yeah, but that is such a small thing. It would be like a 30 second video, you know, right. and after a while you just run out of ideas. Like, I don't know what else to do it's kind of the same old same old do you feel like that with your stuff because i mean you just do a lot of dog fights and it's like i can tell sometimes i don't want to say you're reaching but sometimes you're just i can tell you're like well shit i don't know what else to do so here's a a vegan dog fighting a hind you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so a really good example of that <laughs> it's so funny the, a, a perfect example of that is when i did the uh a10 su25 dog fight and mm. oh, i yeah. had people had asked me for that for so long and i had always been in the comment section being like no i will never do that dumbass dog fight we all know how it's going to end why should i waste my time why should i waste your time making a video about it but the comments would still come and they would have hundreds of likes 
every video, people asking, you know, Frogfoot versus Warthog. And one day I was just out of ideas and I was like, God damn it, fine. We'll do this stupid dogfight. And it, so many views on it too. I'm like, the video that I'd never wanted to make is the one that's, you know, pretty successful. So, yeah, didn't you yeah, title dude, it? Title it that way that, too? Yeah. The, the fight I never wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Sometimes you just run out of ideas. You just, you know, want to give the community what they ask for. It's like, all right, fine. If you really want to see it, I mean, I got no other ideas anyway. So, here yeah. it is. Enjoy. End of the day, I think you've you, you've said the right things in the sense that content creation, it's not about luck. It's about what you put into it and the quality. It's not the quantity. It's the quality of what you're doing. Um, time does not um, yeah. equal success. Passion does not necessarily equal success. Um, you've got to go out there. You've got to brand yourself. You've got to promote yourself. I think you need to stay grounded. I think you need to stay humble. Um, when I talked to Wolfpack months and months ago, we kind of had a discussion about this and, and he said, you can't go into this planning to be the next big thing, you, you know, because if you do, if you're like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and I'm going to have a million subscribers, I think you're going to fail. Um, yep. that, that's what I think is going to happen. I could be wrong, but I think that's what's going to happen. So I think you got to go into it. You got to have fun, uh, and let people see you having fun, but somehow you've got to get through the door of credibility and interest so that, so that people will want to come back and watch your stuff and eventually hit that subscribe button. Cause that's, that's what it's all about. Get those subscribers. Yep. Follower. Anything final closing thoughts? Uh, no man. It was just really cool to come out here and have this discussion. I've never, uh, no one's ever cared what I thought about anything. So <laughs> this was nice. And, uh, <laughs> well, you are married yeah. now, so you get used to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great point. So, yeah, I mean, it was it was a cool experience. Thanks for having me. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it, and I hope I didn't sound too much like an idiot. No, no, I, I save all the idiot stuff for myself. Uh, <laughs> you were a treat and a treasure. Uh, right, you are, Ken. Uh, you asked a question, Kazma. Have you thought about doing general military stories? That's a great segue into the Low Level Hell podcast. You should check it out because I have already been doing that for about a year. So, um, but yeah, check out. Low Level Hell podcast. You can check it out on Apple. I also post them on my YouTube channel, Casmo TV. Um, not that I'm pushing you to subscribe, but you should subscribe and uh, and go check it out. Uh, I post those on there several iterations later because I, I want the, the I want people to go to Apple and and Amazon and stuff and check those out. But uh, at any rate, thank you, Growling Sidewinder, for coming on my to pleasure, this man. weird show that I've come up with. Um, <laughs> And hopefully uh, some people say they hope to see us do some some collaboration. We have collabed in the past. We did. Uh, Hind we've QRF. done a couple. Yep, we did the Hind QRF. We also did some Huey stuff. I think that one's on my channel where yep. I taught GS how to hover. Um, he did pretty good. Getting better. Slowly. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. And we're going to do some Hornet stuff. I'm getting smart on the Hornet and uh, yep. I'm going to kick his ass. Dog fighting. I hope so. Oh, geez. Yeah. I'm going to breathe hard out. into the <laughs> mic. I'm going to freak you out. Uh, it's going to be terrible and I'm going to get destroyed, but I'm going to have a good time doing it. So we're definitely going to do some stuff in the future. We're going to do that vegan video. We're going to get in the vegan together. We're going to be like, what the hell does this squiggly line mean? <laughs> These buttons do. Um, cool. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you again, Growling Sidewinder, for coming on to the show. And, My uh, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. We'll see you guys later. So take it easy. Gun is broken. <gasps> oh, God. Oh, no. <gasps> oh. Watch Ooh. I'm still alive.